Welcome home, Julian Assange. Thank you, Julian Assange. Thank you to the people who have pressured politicians to release a persistent and determined whistleblower. People power and some of us as MPs eventually pressured a fa failing and flailing Prime Minister to do the right thing. Congratulations to Julian's family, wife Stella, father John and legal teams. We're all glad Julian's home. And we're glad you fanned what were the dying embers of good governance in America. And that has important significance for the world. Julian Assange's work is helping the American nation, helping Americans, helping democracy, helping humanity, as I'll explain. Firstly, as a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, I remind everyone that in a representative democracy, the people grant power temporarily to government to work for the good of the people. Particularly in a proven constitutional monarchy such as ours, in which our constitution places we, the people, at the top of the hierarchy. Through you, Madam Acting Deputy President, I thank Senator Shoebridge for his motion. And I want to read this from it. The motion says, the first three parts, affirms that it is essential to protect whistleblowers, to expand their protections and to include a clear public interest test. Secondly, commits to urgently reforming whistleblower laws and creating a whistleblower protection authority. Thirdly, celebrates the return to Australia of journalist and whistleblower Julian Assange. I support this. In this age of government overreach and distinct loss of our freedom of speech, I strongly support protecting our brave whistleblowers. It's essential. Whistleblowers need protection from retribution, particularly from overzealous governments who would prefer to keep the people in the darkness of ignorance, keep people uninformed and unaware of the dirty side of politics. That dirty side abounds throughout the world. Other villains include the mouthpiece media, the legacy media, the big brother globalist media, always printing to their master's agendas. And whose calls for freedom of the press ring hollow when they pick and choose, culling and remaining silent on the day's most important issues. These issues include the lies of safety and effectiveness of COVID mRNA injections and failing to recognise the COVID jab injuries and the unnecessary destruction of the Australian economy through unfounded and often contradictory government directions, restrictions, mandates and lies. COVID awakened people to the mouthpiece media's lies and contradiction as propagandists. Shields pushing the big pharma and big government lines and lies. As the mouthpiece media, the globalist media, failed to report the truth, it failed its role of holding government and politicians accountable. Instead of watching over politics, the globalist Big Brother media became an arm of globalists pushing their global agenda through the American Democratic Party. And the Democrats' owner, George Soros, and their crooked, inhuman flag bearers in Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Some of the people who woke have formed their own media enterprises the alternative new people's media, telling the truth and driving the return of freedom. People like Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Tim Poole, now the whistleblower voices are starting to be listened to. We must all recognise that the people's media and individuals are entitled to speak out without fear of retribution or censorship. Why are governments opposed to this? because they're scared of what the people will do when made aware of the lies and deceit that have led to the destruction of so many lives in Australia, in which government decisions played a huge part. Look at what happens to doctors and others who have exposed the improper behaviour of agencies such as APRA and ATAGI in mandating dangerous drugs, knowing that they had not been adequately researched or trialled to ensure their safety or even effectiveness. Doctors and nurses punished under Australia's new STASI, APRA. Those doctors and other health professionals who were brave enough to speak up have been persecuted and careers destroyed. Where were the whistleblower protections for them? Where? How can we stand here in the Senate and still not be able to rely on safeguards that can encourage, not destroy these people who see wrongdoing and are punished for speaking out honestly? When governments withhold information, it's intended to control what may occur if the truth is exposed. For a democracy to fully function, it requires the contribution of participants, people, in the process, free from any intimidation, including free from any, any intimidation to prevent free speech and the sharing of differing views. In a totalitarian state, the people are scared of the government. In a true democracy, government is scared of the people. What do we have in Australia? 
I'd argue that we have closer to a dictatorship. The mouthpiece Big Brother media did not assist this process during the dark COVID early response days. There was no publication of alternative views or information. Indeed, there was suppression of credible scientific and medical knowledge, facts and data. Suppression at the hands of big pharma, big government, big tech, big media and globalist agencies like the UN World Health Organization. Clearly, the pharmaceutical companies were the big winners and the big controllers. It's the whistleblowers who deserve our thanks, though. Thank you. We now know that Pfizer did not do the research they claimed and the mouthpiece media told us. Pfizer held back unfavourable results, lied to America's FDA drug approval agency, Pfizer lied to our TGA as Australia's drug approval agency and other key bodies, entities and organisations that will now, along with others, face massive lawsuits for the biggest medical fraud in history. One of the best known Australian whistleblowers is Mr Julian Assange, finally back and free in Australia. Look at the pain he's had to endure. He would be one of those whistleblowers who would have benefited from whistleblower protection. A pity that freedom of speech protections that in the American Constitution cannot be used to protect non-American citizens. The Australian Constitution does not provide protection for freedom of speech other than in the limited capacity of political communication, as Australia's High Court determined. Freedom of speech generally should be provided through Commonwealth and state legislation, as well as specific provisions that provide protection for whistleblowers. Is there anything more important in a democracy? I argue there's not. It's fundamental. This whole area needs to be reformed and improved, and I thank Senator Shoebridge for raising it. In a democratic system, it's the people who are central. It's the people who vote in their representatives to govern on the people's behalf for the people. Australia is unique as the only country whose people actually were consulted on and through referendum voted for their constitution. The only country and only the people can change the constitution. It's the people who choose via election who form their government. We Australians must be sure to respect and treasure our democratic process. Otherwise, things can go wrong as happens from time to time in the United States. We do not want a democracy that can turn a blind eye on the shenanigans of people like Hillary Clinton. Her practices were exposed in parts of the documents released through WikiLeaks that led to the relentless pursuit of Julian Assange. One of her solutions, and this is a woman who was a candidate for the presidency of the United States, one of her solutions of retribution was to propose droning Julian Assange murdering Julian Assange. No wonder she and the Democratic Party wanted to suppress Julian Assange. Similarly, bureaucrat Mike Pompeo proposed an attempt to assassinate Julian Assange while Julian was taking refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Since when do people just come in and murder others? When do they do it without even entering court? A democracy that entertains the notions of assassination of civilians abroad has fundamental problems. America in the past as the nation was much admired. Worldwide, it was admired. At the end of the First World War, America was in a position to dominate the world. And what did it do? It withdrew back to its shores. An admirable precedent. Contrast that with America since 1944 and the globalist takeover of America. America became an imperialist power, a ruthless imperialist power. In the last 80 years, globalists exploited their control over America and corrupted its government. America strode the world stage, overthrowing governments and starting wars, wars that fed its massive military industrial complex. As a friend of America, a proud friend of America, we need to question what it does and stop blindly following America into wars. We need to support the wonderful, generous, caring American people. Now, as a result of American imperialism and aggression, the world is changing. BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, is growing, and they're undermining the, Australian, the American dollar. America faces karma. Australia must be careful because of this and ask questions of our American friend. Julian Assange exposed some of the inhuman dark side of the globalist hijacking and driving America. 
I wish to pay tribute to Julian Assange for standing up for truth and for the freedom of speech, and for freedom of speech, for exposing our country's friend, America, and its tilt away from civil democratic governments to unaccountable governments that drone American citizens without a court verdict, that drone people overseas without a court verdict, without even a prosecution, without even a case. It's appropriate that Julian can now be with his family beside him with the freedom that he is entitled to enjoy. Since being elected a senator, I've supported the push for Julian to come home. And I congratulate Senator Shoebridge for his constant, unfailing efforts in marshalling support to bring Julian home. Well done to all involved for your efforts. Thank you for your efforts. We need to expand protections for whistleblowers to restore democracy in our country. That's right, I said restore democracy in our country. Restore democracy in our allies, restore democracy globally. Democracy is fragile. It's beautiful, but it's fragile. To restore and protect democracy, every citizen must do one thing, speak.